All right, so let's make a formal introduction for our listener. Uh, good afternoon, Anders. My name is Claudio. I'm calling you from Washington, D.C. Uh, from the students in Fairfax City, we are very humble and grateful that Anders Cobell accepted our invitation to our show. Anders, welcome to the show, man. Thank you so much. I'm pleased to be here. No, no problem. Thank you, man. So let's start with what's going on in the world. How's the, you know, we've been under the COVID pandemic from the last yeah. two years or so, right? So how this... Yeah affecting yeah, you, your yeah. life as a physician, your personal life, you yeah. know. Of course, it, uh, I mean, it has been a difficult situation for musicians as well for, for all, all other people. Um, but uh, of course we were deprived of our living, uh, our way of uh, making money and our way. And, uh, but for me personally, it hasn't been that bad because Although I couldn't play concerts, I could still compose. So I have uh, composed a lot of new music uh, during the last two years. Uh, but now I enjoy so much playing concerts again. So I think maybe things are lightening a little up now. Uh, although we are heavily, uh, we are heavily, uh, we have a he heavily. Uh, by the Omicron uh, is very heavy in Denmark now, but but it's not that bad and uh, everything is opening now. So I hope for the best. Yeah, so music music venues are <clears throat> opening to the public now and people yeah. can go to concerts, movies, shows. Yes, I have just been on a tour around Denmark and uh, now comes the Winter Jazz Festival. So uh, we are having concerts now. Yeah, good, good for you, man. I'm, I'm glad you're thinking. But, are, but the yeah. audience is sometimes a little hesitant about coming because they are still a little anxious about whether to get infected or not, you know, and all of that. But in all the music, uh, at least here in the United States, uh, you need to wear a mask, right? And you need to yeah. show a proof of vaccine. So if you want to go to yeah. see a a gig, you need to get vaccinated, right? So there's yeah, no yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Right. So, it, it but does, uh, life goes on and I have uh, composed a lot of new music, as I said. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm lucky in that way. Good, good for you, man. I, w I was looking in your <clears throat> biography and, uh, man, the copies are <clears throat> music, <clears throat> sorry, music royalty in Denmark. Man, your, your, your family is, is very, very famous. How old were you when you began playing, perhaps guitar and or taking piano lessons? Piano, piano lessons. Yeah. Feel free to elaborate you know, on your music history. Yeah, you know, I um, started uh, playing piano when I was maybe five. Uh, I studied with my father and my sister actually, um, and so I played. I have played piano ever since that. And then I came into the Copenhagen Boys Choir when I was uh, 10 and sang, you know, all the big uh, masses by, uh, by Johann Sebastian Bach and all of that music, which was, of course, fantastic. And um, when I was age uh, maybe 13, 14, I started playing clarinet. And uh, I thought that I would be, a, I thought I should be a clarinet uh, player. But then when I became maybe 15, 16, uh, I discovered rock and roll music. <laughs> like I you did. know, yeah, you know, jazz music was always there because my father was a very big uh, jazz uh, aficionado and he, um, had a big uh, collection of 78s um, with Armstrong, Ellington, Cap Calloway, Fletcher Henderson, and all of that music from his youth. So I knew about jazz and I loved it, and Ella Fitzgerald and so on and so on. But uh, rock and roll came into my life suddenly when I was 15 maybe. And uh, I started hearing a lot of, you know, Rolling Stones, uh, 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 James Brown, whatever, you know. Yeah. Um, and um, so I, 
and another thing happened when I was 14, I think I had a, I had a Christmas gift from my parents, which was um, an LP with Fats Waller playing uh, the theater organ. Uh, an, an LP recorded in, at the London Palladium in the 30s. And I immediately loved that record. And I thought I will have to play the organ too. Uh, so um, eventually I bought a cheap Italian um, Fafisa organ, started playing that. And uh, I made a rock group, the Savage Shows, together with my brother. And uh, we were immediately very successful and began play, making records when I was 18, maybe. Wow. And uh, we even played the Newport Jazz Festival uh, and had many tours around, uh, uh, around um, the States and uh, all over Europe. So um, uh, my youth actually um, went by playing concerts uh, with the Savage Shows. Yeah. And, and then um, when I was six, 26 or 27, I left the group uh, because I wanted to, to try something else than being in a group. I wanted to be myself. So I began um, uh, composing uh, music for films, uh, theater, uh, I even made an opera and musicals, a lot of musicals, and um, spent the last, the, the, the next uh, uh, five, ten years or something doing that. I was quite successful, had a lot to do. And then when I was in maybe beginning of my 40s, I realized that to take the next, to take the next step, I had to uh, write uh, scores for classical musicians uh, to be my own, you know, my own master completely. So I, I decided to spend much more time on, on that, as well as playing concerts, which I had been doing all the way. Uh, also after, sorry, this is a little messy, but uh, it's a long life. <laughs> it's okay. Um, when I left the Savage Rose, I met two other guys who were heavily interested in um, world music as I was. Uh, music from, uh, I mean, Cuban sun music or Turkish music or, or um, Balinese music or African music, high life music, and all of that I was very um, interested in. And they were also, uh, the one was a wind player, uh, Peter Bastian. He, he played um, Turkish clarinet and uh, electric bassoon. And the other was a percussionist. And um, the three of us had a, a group called Bazaar for 37 years. Wow. Can you imagine that? That's a long wow. time. That's a whole <clears throat> life. Wow. So we uh, stopped uh, playing together in 2013. And, um, and also I've been playing with my son, uh, Benjamin, who is a fantastic saxophone player. Uh, I mean, we have been working ever since he was a boy, actually. We made songs together. He was a great child singer. And we made a lot of songs and recorded them. And uh, when he started playing sax, I we played together and we have had a band ever since he was 16 or 17 and played with a lot of different musicians. Uh, uh, Brian Blade, Scott Colley, uh, Miuslav Vitus, Kenny Werner. Uh, all of those are close friends that we have played regularly with. Yeah. So um, it has been a, a long life in the service of music. And um, I'm still very active uh, and, and love being so. Yeah. <clears throat> Do you prefer to continue 
um, going forward, you prefer to continue uh, performing or uh, writing music or, or it's a combination of both that you prefer to do? Yeah, I love, I love put doing both. It's very different because when you um, compose, uh, you are sort of looking through the microscope. That's right. You are very focused on detail because it has to be right for all the musicians in the, in the orchestra. Every part should be, uh, should have a meaning. So you are very concentrated on making every little detail uh, fine. Uh, when you play concerts, it's a whole different story. You um, you shoot and you go. I mean, uh, it's um, there's no turning back on concerts. When I compose, I can turn back and I do so. The things I did yesterday, I will correct today. I will even change it or throw it away. But in concerts, you um, you act on the moment spur, right? Yeah. So if I have problems with composing, which I maybe have, I, it's not very common, but I may have I, I'm, what to do now. I can always practice or play <laughs> and vice versa. If I find it tedious to, <coughs> uh, sorry, Claudio, one okay. moment. I just have to have a sip of water. <clears throat> no problem. Corona. <laughs> it's okay. So if I have problems with either one of the two professions, I can do the other thing yes. and um, get inspired of that. Actually, I think I get inspired as a composer by playing and vice versa. I think I get inspired as a player by composing. So it's, um, I mean, it's the best of two worlds. Yeah. You you have done so much stuff. I mean, your your career includes music for theater, film, ballet, over over 150 score, and yeah. uh, man, and so on and so forth. It's uh, it's it's amazing how much you have done, man. Yeah, I I'm a regular worker. <laughs> I like to work. I yeah. think the best there is is to work. Actually, nothing better than playing a concert. Nothing better than than sitting here by my desk uh, composing. It's, it's so uh, wonderful. And it's, um, I mean, it's always, it's not, it's, it's always difficult. So you, you have to, you know, use all your power to make something that's good. So uh, it takes a lot and it gives a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I love, I have a big, music collection of um, film and soundtrack as well. And um, have you done, uh, what, what kind of soundtrack, what kind of genre within the within the, the, the film score you have composed? Mystery, horror, uh, comedy? Uh, actually, I have done a lot of, um, yeah, a lot of the animated cartoons. Really, wow. Uh, which is uh, wonderful for a composer because there are so many things I mean, the music plays always a big role in animated cartoons. Just think about, you know, the old Disney movies or something. Yeah. Uh, there's music all the time and it always tells the story as well as the picture does. So um, for me, that was a great challenge and um, very edu educational and uh, a great fun to do actually. Yeah. So I have made a lot of animated cartoons, a lot of documentary, also uh, full-length, um, uh, new uh, what's it called, uh, dramas and so on. But um, the things I loved the most was to make um, the animated cartoons. Uh, when I turned 50, I made a promise to myself, I would not now, uh, stop making movie music uh, because it took so much of my time. I wanted to concentrate on the scores and I, I did so. I stopped making uh, movie music because I had 
made music for 150 films or something like that. So there was not nothing new for me in that anymore. I, I thought I had tried it all. So um, now I wanted to to um, write the scores because that was still difficult and it still is. I mean, it's a big challenge also, always. Yeah, yeah so a big collection. Is all your music is uh, available, let's say in vinyl or CDs or digital media? Is yeah, yeah. Um, there's a lot of CDs available. If you search Spotify, for instance, or, or one of the other platforms from, for my name, yeah. there will be a lot of CDs coming up, both of the score music and, and uh, me as a musician and, and a lot of other things. So please do. <laughs> I, 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 no, I got that. If, if you look now, if you look back in your life when you were, I don't know, 14, 15, have you ever thought that you will you will have done so well as, as you have? Or? No, I, yeah, you know, I don't think that way. I, I'm always concentrated on doing my best and on the work. And um, I'm, I do not so much look back. I look forward. I, I'm always concentrated on the work that I'm now composing and on the next um, on the next concert, you know, next week I will have the first performance of a new harp concerto, and of course I'm very I'm very um, uh, excited about that and occupied with that. And um, but of course I feel so insanely lucky that I have been able to to do the, the two things I love the most, namely playing and composing for all of my life and um, even have made a living of, of it. That's um, so privileged. Yes, no many people have the opportunity to, to do that, you know. No, you are so right. No. So I'm so grateful uh, to, to my destiny. <laughs> yeah, I, I for me, it's the same way, right? I, as mentioned before, I, I don't play any instrument. I don't know how to read any note of music, but I've been listening to music from the last 50 years, four hours a day. Yeah. And uh, yeah. it has given me a lot of satisfaction, a lot yeah. of music, you know. It's, uh, and I go to yeah. a lot of concerts and uh, um, yeah. interviews now with you guys and with you. And yeah. uh, I'm very, it's a privilege. It's, it's very lucky. I'm very lucky. Yeah. So let, let's, let, let's go over your... Um, the new work that you have done with uh, Mulberry Street Symphony, that it's a double yeah. CD with, uh, it, you know, with great composition for the, the Jastrian Orchestra. Uh, first of all, yeah. feel free to elaborate um, about uh, Jacob Reeds. And uh, yeah. I, I, I saw the pictures are, are unbelievable. I mean, how, first of all, it's a lot of questions around that. How you guys were able to um, get the picture to begin with, you know? When he migrated yeah, you, to the United States, and uh, just feel free to. Yeah, elaborate that. Uh, you know, I have known the Reese pictures uh, all of my life, um, uh, and um, then some years ago there was a big exhibition in Copenhagen about Jacob Rees uh, with his photos and his life and so on, and um, I went to see it, of course, and uh, at the same time I was the idea of me making a big, a large scale composition for the trio and symphony, symphony orchestra was uh, on the table. So um, when I saw the exhibition, I immediately thought that there was, maybe it would be an idea to base the piece on some of the pictures because they made such a huge, huge impact on me. And I was very inspired by seeing them because uh, I mean, they were about all the immigrants coming to New York in the 1880s and 90s. And um, I mean, the question of immigration is still to this day, a very big thing and uh, plays a big role also in Denmark. And um, I thought they were sort of, they would 
document, the, the photos document that the immigrants are not just numbers or, or uh, nuisances or whatever you would call them. They are people with hopes and dreams and uh, feelings and, and, and people who wants to get a decent life uh, somehow. Mm. And I felt uh, very, uh, um, uh, yeah, hit by that. And um, then again, then uh, I knew that the trio would be with Benjamin, Scott Colley and Brian Blade, two Americans and one Dane. And um, so I thought about the Danish American connection I know, of course, all of the American music that I have been influenced on, from jazz onward, uh, soul music, um, Sly and the Family Stone, whatever. All the fantastic music that I, American music that I have loved and learned from. And I thought, what have the Americans got from Denmark? Apart from Victor Borge, of course. And then Jacob Rees was there. I knew of his work, his fantastic photos. I knew that his, he had a very, very important role in the development of the social, uh, a social, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, understanding in the American government. He was a friend of Theodore, Theodore Roosevelt and have a great impact on the social legislation in America. So we have, after all, contributed to American history as well. So um, I, that's a little bit about the story why. And then also I thought, if I am going to make a piece 80, 19 minutes long, maybe it would be nice for the audience to have such, I mean, a sort of a reference outside the music to sort of guide them through this long work. And uh, so for many different reasons, I choose the Reese um, photos to be the center of the composition. Yeah. How, long, how long did it take for you to, from having an idea for seeing the exhibition, until it's done and you say, now we can begin rehearsing and, and, and then playing that live. Yeah. I didn't have that long to make it uh, because the concerts were fixed and, um, you know, it took some time before the financing got together and all of that. So I think I composed it in uh, three or four months. So, I was uh, working very, very much for these months <laughs> because it's a lot of small black dots on paper that should be, uh, I mean, considered, created, developed, and so on. You know, the, it's a big work, and uh, but I enjoyed so much to do it. And also, I knew that the jazz trio would consist of Benjamin, who has been my partner for all of my life, all of his life anyway. And um, and the drummer Brian, Brian Blade and bassist Scott Colley, both of whom um, are old friends and we've been playing together uh, many, many times in different combinations. And Benjamin has a regular trio with the two of them. And um, I know all three of them as great virtuosos and fantastic musicians. And, um, and they have a deep understanding of my music as well. Uh, they have all three of them been following, following my, my music. And, uh, and um, so actually the idea to make this work came from Scott Colley. It was his, uh, he said to me one day, why don't you make a big piece for the trio and symphony orchestra? And immediately I could see it was a wonderful idea. So uh, I made the composition 
and we uh, had um, first a concert in Aalborg in Denmark with Aalborg Symphony Orchestra. Then the next week we make, we went to Odense to make the same concert with a new symphony orchestra. And then after the day after the concert, we recorded it on the uh, for the CD. Yeah, and I know the CD is coming up soon. But what will be? How has been the, the reception in in your country about uh, uh, the music, uh, the you know the composition, the, the you know the, yeah. the the place you have played already has you have have a, a good good have been re received well in your country? Or? Yeah, yeah, very well. I mean, um, the concerts we had had uh, fantastic reviews and were met by a very uh, by a very enthusiastic audience mm. audiences and um, of course we have we haven't had any uh, reactions to the CD yet because it will be out on the 18th of February yeah so uh, I think the reviews will come after that so it's uh, exciting times what we had a lot of uh, reviews actually now, from yeah. uh, we we had this uh, uh, four and a half star in downbeat, which was amazing for me, of course. Wow! Yeah, of course. And then do um, sometime <clears throat> in certain countries, for one reason or another, uh, people tend to listen to uh, foreigners, right? Uh, no, no, yeah. it's hard to be famous in your own country. In like people so like. Right. Like I'm, I, I, you know, was born in Latin America, and uh, I will live in the United States, and I see, yeah. man, that's great work. Is it is it, yeah. it the same happen in your country, or 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 it's difficult for a Danish man like yeah. or, like musician like yourself be kind of well receive your music in, in your yeah. art? But but you are you're right, of course. Uh, it is more difficult in your own country sometimes, uh, and it works very well if I can say. If I can show you, show them the good reviews from America, they are all very excited. Oh, wow. But, <laughs> but that's an old story. <laughs> no, man, you, I, 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 I'm privileged that uh, through your publicist, I, um, I was able to receive the music. And, uh, and now I want to talk a little bit about that. Uh, is any particular reason that you did that kind of seven uh, movement or, or it just, um, came that way, or... uh, yeah. You know, I had a, I had a rough idea of the structure of the piece, uh, and the structure of the photographs. Uh, you know, how to start, for instance. Yeah, and I found this picture stranded in the city, uh, which was obviously maybe taken just when the guy had come to New York. It was a rival in New York sort of atmosphere. So I thought that would be a wonderful uh, point of departure. And uh, I had the ending as well. Uh, the new house movements, the photo depicts the house that uh, Jacob Rees uh, uh, funded uh, for orphans. Um, so I thought that would be a wonderful ending with a sort of hope for the future, which is in this house that he built for his own money for orphans so they could have a decent life. So that would be a nice ending. And I wrote this sort of hymn uh, for the last movement. And then I started looking for the for the middle movements, uh, and I of course also needed movements with some action and tempo, you know. And then I found this uh, picture of the shoe shine boy, and his, you know, in the photographs, photograph, he is out of focus. And I read that he was always out of focus because he was running, you know, all the time. He was busy uh, making a living uh, with his shoe shine box and so on. So that sort of inspired me 
to make this movement with a lot of action and tempo and so on. So one movement took another. And um, when I had made these seven, I thought of felt that I had a wonderful curve or that they were very well sort of knitted together and told the story of the immigrants in New York and the Reese photos. Yeah. Do you know, as far as you know, if the uh, Reese descendants are still the yeah. third or fourth generation still living here in the United States or they're... they're yes, in... they are. They are. And um, actually, I have, um, I have talked to them. I have met them in Denmark because oh. a couple of years ago, there was an opening of a Jacob Rees museum in his native town. And they were there for the opening. Mm -hmm. And uh, I played some, uh, some of the music on my Hammond organ together with my son. And um, they were very enthusiastic and uh, wonderful people. And we are still in contact. Well, good for you. And in many ways, the music is in is like eulogy, uh, eulogy to um, to the life of those people. You know, I'm a, I'm an immigrant myself as well here in the United States because, I, I, yeah. like I told you, I was born in Chile and I I came to the United States to study after high school. Okay. And uh, I wasn't uh, you know as poor as, as there you know as yeah. them. Uh, but this is a wonderful country, man, and uh, it's it's. There, there will never be another United States in any part of the world, in any galaxy. No, any, no, you're, you're so right. It's, and, it's uh, you know, difficult. of course, in, Amer in America, everybody, almost everybody are immigrants. Of course. Uh, and in Denmark, uh, I am and my family are immigrants as well. My grandparents were fugitives from, uh, Jewish fugitives from Poland. Yeah. Uh, in 1907, uh, my grandfather was to be a Russian soldier. Uh, Poland was occupied by Russia at that time. And he was to be a, a Russian soldier for 25 years. So he thought I better get out of this country. And he took his fiance and uh, fled to Denmark. Wow. His original hopes, uh, or they, their original hopes was to get to New York, but um, they never got that far uh, because of lack of money. So for me, luckily, they stayed in Copenhagen, uh, where the at that time the the fugitives uh, were very well received. And he soon, he was a tailor. So he soon had a, a, a small uh, tailor workshop and, and made a living on, on, of that. And the next year, my father was born in Copenhagen. Good for you, man. Is this the first record you have done with, uh, I think the record label is called uh, Unit Records, is that correct, right? Yeah, yeah, this it's, is, the it's first. It's a very well-known uh, jazz yes, it is. label, if you will. Yeah. Uh, my son, Benjamin, has uh, released two CDs already on Unit, yep. and so he proposed to me, uh, why not send it out on um, Unit, because he thought that the, it would have a much better fate, the work and the CD. And uh, I think, actually, it starts very well. Uh, I mean, you and me talking now, uh, that's uh, that's a great thing, and uh, yeah. I have uh, had a lot of concert, new uh, contacts uh, in Germany and uh, uh, Austria and uh, America of, of interested people in 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 Marbury Street Symphony. So actually, I'm very excited about it, about it. Yeah, yeah. I was listening to uh, I listened to the CD. Um, a couple of times last night, and there are two pieces that, uh, for me, are, they were very moving. Uh, the first one, the Stranding, uh, Stranding Strange City, and then the Blind Man. So, uh, yeah. you know, feel free to elaborate, or if you can recall how this that particular movement came together. What, what, what was the first one? 
The first one is the first uh, the first track, right? It's stranded in this. Okay. It's stranded, and then the blind men also. They, yeah. They they they, uh, they were. I'm uh, very the, very passionate about those two. And, uh, yeah, I mean the first movement, stranded in the CC, as I said to you, was uh, inspired by this photo of this young man standing in his maybe only suits uh, in in the in the uh, outside the doors in a one of these big tenement house tenement houses in New York where there were living thousands of immigrants in very very poor conditions and um, i saw so much not only hopelessness but also hope and um, and uh, what could i say in his case you know so I wanted in the music to to make uh, to to tell the story of a man alone in this big city, you know, with a lot of people and traffic and 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 all of that, and then his his isolation within. And uh, I thought that I I think that I have captured some of this in, in this first movement. I mean, the strangeness of the new city, he has never been here, it's completely other. I remember when I got to New York the first time in 1968, I was feeling very, I mean, it's for a European coming to America, New York City is a is an explosion of energy. And it, it must have been at that time too. And uh, I wanted to have that in the music as well. Uh, the Blind Man was of course inspired by the, this picture, The Blind Man by Reese. Uh, he's standing on the corner, leaning again a lamp, against the lamppost, selling his pencils, he's standing with them in his hand, and um, he's been standing there, I imagine, for years, and uh, he's also have this isolation because of his lack of sight, and in the right side of the picture you see these four or five faces uh, grim faces in the picture um, that sort of makes a, a very strange commentary to this this isolated guy. And I wanted to make a melodious thing, which it is, the movement, but with an but with a strangeness in it also, sort of isolated but with a strong feeling. Uh, and I see him that way in the picture. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a beautiful piece. Uh, I was looking at to, I uh, was listening to uh, Spotify as well last night, and there is um, one particular <clears throat> track that I really liked it. Nothing to do with this, um, with Mulder Street Symphony, but it's called uh, Everything is Subject to Change from yeah. the album with the same name. That, that's a beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. That was a record I did with um, Benjamin, of course. Yeah. <laughs> and a percussion, a percussionist, a Danish percussionist, and um, uh, American piano player Kenny Werner, yeah. who is an old friend of mine. And uh, I enjoyed so much making that record. I, I, I love it too. <laughs> yeah. I have made another. Um, CD with Kenny, um, the two of us only, with uh, organ and piano, which I like also very much. That's all improvised music. Wow. Uh, but everything is subject to change. Is um, uh, it's songs, of course, and uh, the title came from a. There's a small cafe. On um, Broadway in New York. Uh, and the, and it's a you know a poetry cafe. It's sort of um, poets come there, and I have been there, 
and its name is everything is subject to change. Wow, wow, yeah, that's a, that's a great title. You you have received so many awards and nomination uh, because you know you you come from a very distinguished family as well, musician. It, it, look, is anyone in particular that you are uh, more proud of or? Or, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, of course, it's wonderful to get recognized. Yeah. And it's wonderful when, you're, when your work gets attention. That's, that's a wonderful thing. But other than that, I am, as I said earlier, mostly concentrated on doing my job the best that I can. Yeah. Uh, because it takes all of my powers. You know, I'm this year I will be 75. So <coughs> I have to work. Um, yeah, I, I have to work very hard. Well, well, you have done well well for yourself. I mean, and 75, you're... <laughs> Sorry. You're, no problem. <coughs> Boss, okay. Uh, so I would... Um, you know, you, you are very humble as well, and I know you have done a lot of work. I mean, uh, in the 80s and 90s, you know, you wrote over 50 play, eight modern large scale ballet, over a hundred different movies. Man, it's a lot. Where, where, where does the, the energy and the enthusiasm to come from in your case? I mean, you can retire, and but you, you choose to wake up every morning and then go to your desk and write and write and yeah. think about the future and whatever, you know, it would be too easy to say, hey, I'm done with music, I, I have done well mm -hmm. my life, but no, you you choose, get your coffee in the morning or go for yeah. a walk in your country and continue working. Where, where does the motivation come from to do that? The, the motivation comes from music because it's so wonderful to, to be occupied with music. So I couldn't, uh, I couldn't live without it. I have to, uh, occupy myself with music one way or the other, uh, either playing or composing, uh, which is for me just as important as food or love or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, I, of course, this is very banal to say, but I really couldn't live without working with music. I don't think I could. So it's essential for me to keep walking uh, and this walk I have together with music is so interesting and fulfilling. And um, uh, so I have to keep walking. Yeah, good for you, man. So what do, what do you feel free to elaborate on what is coming up for you? And uh, what are the plans for the near future? And feel free to elaborate on any, any regarding any gigs and touring. Uh, you know, next week, I yeah. have the first performance of my harp concerto. As I said to you, it's called Harpo after uh, Harpo Marx, mm -hmm. who was a brilliant harp player. And uh, that's next week. And the week after that, it's the Winter, F Winter Jazz Festival in Copenhagen. So I have a lot of concerts during that time. So that's the immediate plans for the next couple of weeks. Good for you, man. Good for you. And, uh, yeah. What, what what kind of music are you are you listening nowadays that no it's not yours that you're not composing your um, any yeah at the moment uh, I listen yeah two two records I two CDs I will uh, mention or CDs music uh, I listen a lot to the French composer Olivier Messiaen I don't know if you are familiar with his music. No, but no. it's it's fantastic music, and I love a lot. I learn a lot from listening to it. And the other one is um, the new CD uh, of uh, Bob Dylan. Yeah, well, the rough and rowdy ways. Yeah, I love that CD. And um, you know, I have a duo with a cello player, Hammond and Cello. And we just recorded our second album. And um, one of the tunes, one of the songs on that album will be one of the songs from uh, Bob Dylan's CD. Oh, 
Good for you. Man. So uh, that was, you know, I even in my youth, I was a huge fan of Bob Dylan's. I saw him in Copenhagen in 1966, I think, together with the band. And uh, then for many years, I sort of lost contact. I, I didn't follow him that closely. I had a lot of, lot of other things to do and a lot of other interests also. But um, when I heard the rough and rowdy ways that he, uh, that was issued, I think last year, uh, that was, uh, I think it's a fantastic record. So um, I'm on the train again. <laughs> right. Do you have a, like a big music collection at home? CDs, vinyl? And not that big. Not big you know, yeah. uh, I have this big disadvantage to you, for instance. That is when I work, and I, lo and I work a lot, as you know, I cannot listen to music. <laughs> yeah. So when I have been out here in my study for maybe eight, ten, ten hours or something, uh, I'm really done with music because I have been listening and working with music for eight, ten hours, yeah. and then I want to see a movie <laughs> right. or talk to my dog. <laughs> yeah, talk to dog. Yeah, maybe you, I. Well, you want to see a picture of my dog? Yeah, yeah. I think I saw it. I think I saw it. Just lying here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's um. His name is Faithful in Danish. Okay. And he's a very nice companion. Good for you. I never, I never been in your country, and hopefully one day I will go and visit you and then knock at your door and. And they will, will go for a cup of coffee or, or beer or dinner. Please do, please do. Uh, I, to, I, I would love to you, visit your country. I think you will, you would enjoy it here. So please come and please um, notify me when you come. I will, I will. And the last question, feel free to elaborate on your uh, your website or whether where our listener can buy your music and, and so on and so forth. And feel free to. Yeah, I mean, the, my music is, as everybody else, available on the on the platforms, uh, Spotify, iMusic, and all of that. So um, I don't have a website as such. Um, I have a Facebook page uh, no. where people can see my news, where I post uh, when I have some of my concerts and, and, and things like that. Um, and that's about it. Yeah. Uh, but I have a lot of music available uh, on, the, uh, on the platforms uh, all the way back from the Savage Rose and uh, with Bazaar, uh, some of the records we made and, and a lot of my classical stuff too. And this year there will be even more CDs coming out, so uh, it should be possible to find my music. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Well, you need to stay healthy, Anders, and uh, continue working. Yeah. You know, uh, do exercise and uh, stay healthy, and hopefully, will you because you have a lot of music uh, to write. You have a lot of stuff in yeah. front of you. So. Yeah. Thank you so much, Claudio. It was a pleasure talking to you, and stay you. healthy yourself. I will. And then See hopefully we'll get together one day. See you someday. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Thank you.